On October 31st, 1940, a man by the name of Craig Rodwell was born in Chicago, Illinois. 19 years later, he moved to New York City in the summer of 1959, where he wanted to join the gay rights activist group, the Manchine Society, but he wasn't 21 years old yet, so he wasn't allowed in the group. As a college student, he frequented the gay cruising areas to find other gay men, and was arrested in September of 1962 for resisting a police sweep at the popular gay cruising area called Jacob Rees Park. The police physically abused him in prison for being gay, and he even attempted to commit suicide because of this. But luckily, this attempt was not successful, especially considering his later accomplishments in life. He then traveled across the country, landing in California, but later returned to New York in early 1964 with a promise to be a much more involved activist for gay rights. Craig founded the Manchin Young Adults in the same year because he knew that gay visibility was the key to ending oppression. Two years later, he staged a protest to challenge New York State's liquor authority, which at the time was refusing to license bars that served liquor to gay men and lesbians. This rule by the state liquor authority caused many gay bars to be owned by organized crime syndicates and the mob, which Craig knew wasn't right either. So the protest was against the bars and the liquor authority. Craig even worked odd jobs on Fire Island to save up enough money to buy a storefront at 291 Mercer Street, where he opened the Oscar Wilde Memorial Bookshop on Thanksgiving Day in 1967. This was the first place in New York where LGBTQ people could go to and not feel exploited and overcharged by organized crime families. This is where he started his own organization called the Homophile Youth Movement in Neighborhoods, which was the first ever gay youth group. Craig was one of the many people who stood up at Stonewall Inn on June 27, 1969, but Rodwell was the only protester to race to a phone booth and start calling press outlets to send reporters. No media outlet besides one called the Village Voice actually sent a reporter to cover the event at Stonewall. And I just want to pause for a moment because imagine having the exclusive on a story like Stonewall Inn. The event was literally the biggest news story of the entire decade, and an event which changed the course of history worldwide, and only one news outlet wanted to cover it. But Craig Rodwell knew the significance, so he stood out on the street outside of Stonewall Inn the next morning and handed out leaflets, encouraging gays to continue to fight oppression. Later, on November 1st and 2nd of the same year, at the Eastern Regional Conference of Homophile Organizations in Philadelphia, PA, he and Ellen Brody were the two people credited with proposing the resolution that a demonstration should be held in New York City on the last Sunday in June to commemorate the 1969 Stonewall Rebellion. He suggested that it be called the Christopher Street Liberation Day. All other annual protests and LGBTQ Pride events since then are credited to him and Ellen Brody proposing this in 1969. He sadly passed away on June 18, 1993 after a long battle with stomach cancer. Anyway, that was our LGBTQ history fact of the day. Please join us in fighting for LGBTQ education in all schools by signing the petition linked below. While you're down there, consider supporting our show by checking out our Pride Academy student collection in our merchandise store. Don't forget to like this video, comment your LGBTQ-friendly thoughts, hit that rainbow subscribe button so you don't miss out on new episodes of the show, and share this video with others. As always, I'm your host, Matt Haslam. This has been PBR. Thank you so much for watching and have a gay day, everyone. Watch Powered by Rainbows Season 3, only on MHPTV.